What's going on, my beautiful people? It's Thursday. You know what that means. Another beautiful day here inside the Black Actors Studio. I'm your host, Danny Royce. And joining me today in the studio is an incredible talent. You've seen him as Rock on Straight Outta Compton. He's also been opposite of The Rock in Rampage. Don't move a muscle. Tune into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. Hey, we are here. It's your boy Danny Royce. Welcome inside the Black Actors Studio. I'm very happy to have my guest in the studio today. Uh, you've seen him on Love Jack, Westworld, House, Heroes. Banshee, The Rookie, Justified, the list goes on. This guy is amazing. Please welcome the Black Actors Studio is very proud to have Demetrius Gross. What's good, man? How are you? Nice to see you, man. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I like these little, uh, so you can't see that out there, but they have these little, uh, these little reminders to mute your devices. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool to be. Yeah, we got to make sure things are right, you know. So we can hear you. <laughs> but I want to start off by saying congratulations on Fear the Walking Dead. All right, just aired uh, the 15th. So how was uh, how was booking that role and, and being on the set? It was the first time I'd ever done anything, you know, regarding a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. You know, and so I uh, kind of felt like... Uh, was in a video game you know? yeah right Cause they have all these these amazing actors that choreograph their movements and you know i was swinging an axe and <laughs> you know zombie hunting and uh right. it was a really interesting world to, to play in because you know often when you do contemporary stuff it's very you know there's a lot more uh you know relationship to everyday life right this is a whole different world so it was fun to be in my imagination that way and yeah they have a sure. great team over there i got a chance to work with some really Amazing actors and producers. Yeah. For sure, and you were, uh, you fil filmed that in Georgia, right? Uh, I filmed Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, no, in Texas. Oh, in Texas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's two. I think that uh, there's the original. The, the Walking Dead. The Walking yeah. Dead. And there's then the Fear of the Walking Dead. Nice. Yeah. And so yeah. tell us a little bit about your character. On the uh, my character is a, uh, you know, in this world of uh, the zombie apocalypse, there's. Uh, the, there's a lot of uh, enmity between folks. You yeah. know, they, they say that um, you know the zombies are predictable. They're, right. They're you know you kind of know what you're gonna get, mm -hmm. but it's it's the the humans, the the, the live people that right. are that are the the juggernaut. You know, yeah. the volatile ones. And so my my guy is very much a uh, cynic and a pragmatist. And, um, <laughs> he lives on his own. Right. He lives on his own out in the middle of the woods and. You know, it, it, you have to see it to believe it. It's, it's interesting. It's <laughs> too much more away, but uh, right. It, it's uh, it was a fun character to play because it, it had, um, like I said, it was in such a different world than I'm, I'm, I'm sure. used to playing. And right, so, that'd be fun to play around. In yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always you know great when the uh, imagination is is activated and. Uh, in unexpected ways. You Did know? you ever like pretend shoot zombies when you were younger, like you know, going around the house? And nah, it's <laughs> funny because I wasn't really a zombie guy. Like, really? And okay. The, and the video games I played were were you know they were more like uh, I don't even want to name them because I want to date. Them, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> but uh, you know, it it, it was just a, literally an opportunity that when I read it, it was it was intriguing and right. and I got to play in a different space than I'm used to. So. So, I, I, I took the leap of faith. It turned out well. The producers said they like it, so yeah, I'm ex I'm excited. To hey, see so it. that's a win. There you go. Yeah. And so in the studio, we always like to start off the beginning. Okay, where were you born? I was born in Washington D.C. Hey, Chocolate City, the mecca. <laughs> Chocolate <laughs> City. You already know. I mean, you know, it's it's definitely more of a uh, yeah. a melange now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how was how was the uh, growing up in D.C. and the family dynamics and all that with? DC was, uh, you know, I was, it's funny. I travel a lot of places in the world, and I, I just feel very grateful to be from uh, my city, and mm -hmm. specifically from the t the time that I grew up there. Right. I mean, it's it's changed so dramatically, mm -hmm. and uh, while it's become, you know, some would say it's become safer and more commercially viable, you know, the culture is still in a learning curve, right? Um, right. Because, you know. Back then, you know, it, 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 it was a volatile city. It was a, a very, um, you know, 
dangerous place in some pockets, but it was also very beautiful. And, um, you know, we'd have things like Georgia Avenue Day and the Caribbean Day Festival parades, nice. and, you know, just it, just the culture, you know, being in the backdrop of, of Howard University and all of that. Right. So it's um, it, it, it's interesting when I travel in different places of the world um, and I and I I see bur- like burgeoning progressive uh, uh, black communities um, that remind me of home, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what I grew up, you know, mm-hmm. a- around, you know, um, just black, hardworking, working class families who um, who cherished um, cherished culture and community. Yeah, and, for sure. And, um, so it's 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 a, it's still an awesome place. I still go back home often. You know, okay. I still have family that nice. lives there. So that's what's up. Yeah. Did you have you have any siblings? Yeah, I was yeah. a brother and a sister. Okay. And, uh, actually, we still have, own the house that we grew up in. Really? My mom has <laughs> moved on to another spot, but my sister still holds that spot. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Did you have any nicknames growing up? Yeah, I was uh, Little Man. And and a less a less uh, cool nickname, but I just recently <laughs> remembered it. It, it was our uh, black little brother. That was what they black called. little brother. That, <laughs> it, it was just black little brother. It was a dude that lived up the street from me who was really like a, a big brother to me, right. uh, and his name was Black. Uh, name was black. So we were the same complexion. So, and I wasn't as popular as he was. But, you know, right. I was always, you know, tagging along, so they used to just call me Black Little Brother. Right. <laughs> Black Little Brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now, I guess when you string it together, it's like, it, it kind of makes more sense. Right. Black Little Brother. Black Little Brother. Okay, all right. I can, I can you asked. You know? I did. I did ask. That was a, <laughs> it's a very unique one. <laughs> now, yeah. in... Um, it, how was the uh, the dynamics with your... Was your mother and father in your life growing yeah. up? And Well, I mean... My mother definitely, and the man that I know as my father mm-hmm. was in my life okay. uh, for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. He just transitioned in 2013, uh, same same month, like within weeks of my son being born. So it was interesting. You said he's just tra- transitioned. Yeah, like he passed oh. away. But, oh, okay, uh, gotcha. I mean, yeah, I would consider that my yeah, father. For I mean, sure. I mean, he raised me since I was like a child. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I okay. mean, I was very fortunate to um, to have uh, to have both of those. Presence, right, right, in, in, in my sure. home and in my upbringing. Um, yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, now, especially nowadays, it's not as uh, common, uh, mm-hmm. you know, especially for black communities. Um, what in growing up when you went to school, like when did you start getting interested in acting and the entertainment and all that? Uh, you know, I, I used to I used to answer this question very differently. Mm-hmm. Um, now I realize that I always kind of had a propensity towards uh, mm. characters and, mm-hmm. and uh, making voices, and you know, I, I was a guy who would call at my mother's office with a, <laughs> with a different accent and a different <laughs> voice and try to like throw off the receptionist. Oh wow! <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, a guy in class that would find the per- try to find a perfect moment to to make a joke you know one of my early teachers in, in I think middle school or elementary school said you know if you you want to be the class clown you can be the class clown it's just all about timing like, yeah if you if you hey. time it right then it can it can you know breed levity in, in, right. like, in the moment but if you time it wrong you know you're gonna go to the principal's <laughs> office and you're gonna get suspended or something so, and um, a teacher told you that yeah, yeah oh that's pretty yeah, dope yeah, uh, good yeah. advice <laughs> you know she said time it, it. it's all about timing yeah so I mean, I guess that translated into into high school and developing uh, TV shows and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, you know, closed circuit broadcast shows and yeah. um, not making the basketball team. You mm. know, and um, still having that that desire to to perform and, and tell stories. And I, I loved English. You know, I loved okay. I loved reading literature and um, you know what that what that did to to our you know what it does rather to our our concept or our, our ideas about the world around right, us. You know, for sure. you, you read a you read something about Baldwin or you, you read a a great um, a great poem by like Langston Hughes mm-hmm. and, and it's like, you know, forty, fifty years removed from your experience, but it uh, still somehow relate it to relates it, yeah. to you and you mm-hmm. and you can identify with it. The, right. those kinds of things really kind of version my desire to to be in, in 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 film and acting and theater. Okay, you know? and don't feel I didn't make the basketball team either. So yeah, I know. <laughs> it was great. I mean, you know, but one door closes, another opens. Right, exactly. 
Uh, what was what were some of your favorite TV shows, actors that you saw uh, growing up that really inspired you? Through like, oh, I want to do what they do. Oh man, I I was just thinking about this the other day. <laughs> you know, I remember. Um, you know, we we had VHSs way back. Yes, way back, <laughs> you know, what I'm so we watched the same movie over and over and right. over again. And, I, uh, and so I realized that those movies were intrinsically, you know, a part of my groundwork, you know, right. like why I desire it. And those movies were were X by Spike Lee, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Coming to America, starring uh. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> funny enough, Home Alone. Oh, right? okay. Like, you know, um, classic. But these, I mean, these are not classic. necessarily like movies that, like the de- were the defining reason right. why I decided to become an actor. But yeah. they, these were the movies that were on rotation. These oh yeah, movies of course. That we watched <laughs> of over course. and over again because we had the. Time. Are you excited for coming to America, dude? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's it's, uh, it's great. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad they they got it off the ground and got it complete. I, yeah. I just um, I just co-executive produced a, a movie with Leah Leah Daniels Butler. Uh-huh. Uh, we just did a movie called Survival. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Elise Neal and I, and. Uh, Hopefully it'll be coming out at the end of this year. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm just re- always excited for for her team and their right. family and right, right. all the cool stuff they're doing. I think they're doing uh, the Billie Holiday mm-hmm. uh, biopic coming up as well. So yeah, nice. I mean, I guess that in a nutshell, maybe coming to America X. <laughs> um, those are some old movies, guys. Right, but, VHS, um, man. Yeah, VHS. But there was something Crazy. about that though, because you would watch the same yeah. thing over and over. Now, I mean, yeah. we just we on to the next. You yeah, know, we, we don't. Well, I, I don't remember the last time I watched something again after mm-hmm. you know over. <laughs> it had to yeah. be like years past. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what was some one of your like first uh, work that you in? was it? A, was it a play? Was it what was it when you really was like got into to acting? My first thing, um, <laughs> you know, I always think of the first time I actually did a monologue was mm-hmm. was in school. Uh, I had to do a to do a book report, and I did a report on Benjamin Banneker. Okay, and uh, I think something may have happened that that day. Like I got I spilled milk on the paper, or I lost the paper. I probably might have <laughs> lost it. But uh, my mother, you know, God bless her. She was like, you know, why don't you dress up as him and just and just talk about it. Or talk about his life as your him, man. And that's that dope. that memory is so vivid. I remember, you know, s- standing in the mirror with, um, like my I had like long white socks pulled up. You know, like the uh-huh. old uh, yeah. <laughs> the know, stockings, the stockings, and, yeah, yeah. and the little. You know, I think we made up uh, some belt buckles or, or the shoe, the loafer buckles. Yeah, out of yeah. My mother's uh, she had some door knocker earrings or something. I think we put those <laughs> and glued them on it. I mean, it was it, you know. It was creative, but I remember like you know doing this voice and kind of pretending to be Benjamin Banneker. That was the first time I think I really was like, "Oh, this is cool right. to, to be in your imagination." And uh, and I else. do remember it being really successful. And I mean, of course, since then, you know, you do professional right. theater performances, of and, course, and 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 film and television stuff. But that was, I think was the first time that I really said, "Oh, this is cool," and you can shift the paradigm with, yeah. with storytelling and, and personification of a character. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's really kind of what where I, I'd like to go into more and, and creatively is, is starting to play. Uh, Producing plays and stuff. Well, that, but more so um, performing um, real, like, real historical, mm. historical figures in our culture. Yeah. Um, that, you know, speak speak to me in, in, in a... Um, in a way that I feel like I can emboss or or galvanize their relevance in, right. in today's oh, okay. culture. You know what I mean? That'd be dope. That'd be that'd be actually a mm. nice reduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of like you know it's always this is a, like acting is um is an interesting thing because you can you can either write your own thing, mm-hmm. you can audition for what other people write, or you can kind of channel what you're looking for from what's out there. Right. And um, I mean, you know, I've been doing all three, and I think it's it's. It's interest. It's interesting what you can manifest. You know, For like sure. what you can attract if you if you have a definite intention and write down that plan and how you know the universe, God will will put that opportunity in front of you. Right. So yeah, just kind of thinking about like what what do I want to do now? Okay. And 
you just helped me stumble upon it a little bit. Hey, a, a, there we go. <laughs> yeah. For sure. When uh, when was that transition to to LA? Uh, did you move straight from DC or did you go to New York? No, nah, actually, I I mean, I got out of school in 2005. I started uh, in Pittsburgh at uh, Carnegie mm-hmm. and left and went to Howard for a minute for Howard. a couple of semesters. Yeah. I went to Oxford and I came back to to Pittsburgh to finish up in 05 at Carnegie. I came out here in 06, I think, or the end of 05, beginning of 06. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of did New York for a hot minute just to take meetings and kind of get introduced to the theater community right. up there. But I've been kind of going up there, growing up in DC and- For sure. You know, just being able to, to be a part of that that theater culture up there. But yeah, I came out, out to LA, I think, 2006, probably like the end okay. of 05, beginning of 06. And um, yeah, while I go back east often, I mean, I've, I've pretty much kept a, a good nest out here. Right, right. You know, since then. What's the, what was the one of the biggest challenges you met coming out here? <laughs> uh, man, I think the biggest challenge at LA is it's it's a very esoteric thing. Like, it's hard to put your, your, your <laughs> finger on it and actually describe it. Right. You know, like you, you love LA, but. <laughs> You like if you're from 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 east east coast like your experience in LA is informed by your experience in on on the east coast right. you know and when you're on the east coast you you miss LA mm-hmm. so it's it's kind of I won't quite call it a love hate relationship but it's kind of like this you know uh, this this pool where you yeah. you know once you're here and you get into it you love it but then you know you kind of <laughs> want to get out of it too. yeah I you want to like, take a little break but I think the, <laughs> the biggest challenge probably would just be um the the traffic <laughs> and, <laughs> and how big everything like all the streets are wide and so, so big, there's yeah. not that i don't know um it doesn't feel like it's that interpersonal feel, right you right. know that that i grew up used to um but you know you, you evolve you grow you mm-hmm. change and you learn to appreciate um you know things that you didn't necessarily um, see a value in before, so right. I, I love the the geographic uh, diversity here. You know what I mean? For sure, the mountains, for sure. the beach, you know, everything. Every, you know, <laughs> all that. That's what's up. Um, so I, some <laughs> getting to some of your your credits because um, they're amazing for one. But uh, straight out of Compton, I want to talk about that though. Yeah. Um, how was <clears throat> booking that role, and uh, what was one of your favorite <laughs> moments on that set? <laughs> <laughs> Booking that role was was a really interesting story because uh, I, I I got an email from uh, Rob Hardy actually who we worked together on a uh, on a ABC show mm-hmm. with uh, Forrest Whitaker so we kind of kept in touch and he he sent me an email that somebody had sent him that there was this open call that was happening at a recreation center like actually in Compton yeah, yeah. you know it, you know classic open calls like we just <laughs> we want to give everybody an opportunity yeah. you know and I, I thought it was a really you know, kind of ingenious thing because sure. uh, you know I thought it would it, it could really breed like a lot of authenticity in the film which mm-hmm. ultimately it did, it did yeah. um and so I I went down for the open call. I didn't like go through my agents or anything or, mm. you know, managers or I just, I said, I want to show up. And I was out there all day, like, uh, you know, w- with the homies. Yeah, like, from, yeah. I think it started about nine and then it wrapped up about four. Okay. And uh, they didn't really consider me for one of the roles actually at first because they were really looking for the band members. Right, right. right. So um, eventually uh, I'm, Finagle my way to get in to read. I think I read for Dre, and then I read for Suge, and I'm obviously not either <laughs> one of those those guys. Um, and then you know, like I guess months later, literally, I got a call from the director. That's crazy. Like the same day, you know. Uh-huh. I don't know if somebody else fell out, or right? Right. Or what, whatever it happened behind the scenes, point. it didn't matter. Yeah. But <laughs> Gary was like, "Hey, you know, I, I know you classically trained, and you, you know, you a theater degree, but I need you to come down here and do this little hood thing. I don't know if you can do it." And I think he was kind of like, he was kind of nudging me to, um, to amp thing. up my, uh, you know, my street swag. Yeah, whatever. yeah. But, Bring um, out DC. <laughs> he, and then literally, he was like, "All right, come down here." He gave me the address. It was a very different experience, and then when I went down there, I, I we just revised the scene and and kind of improvised it, mm-hmm. locked it, locked it what we wanted to do, and and we did it. Universal loved it. They put the scene at the beginning of the movie before the credits because I think the scene originally was like 
deep into mm-hmm. you know the second or, or third act. Okay. Um, and so then they moved it up. And um, I guess my favorite moment was actually, you know, sitting in the video village and talking to Dre about the, you know, the difference between the process of working with Tupac versus working with Kendrick mm. and how they differed as as artists wow. and as, you know, producers yeah, and, yeah. and what and what that experience is like. And then, you know, being in the little scene where we were running running through the, the dope house. Yeah. And um and Cube was actually on the uh on the camera. I think we probably might have shot on the red or whatever, dragon and I just remember him doing the whip, you know, like when we go around the corner. Yeah. Q wanted to hold the camera, so he's in the corner, like on. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's also executive producer, yeah, but he yeah. wanted to be like a camera operator. Right, right. right. Wow. Just, you know, so that was that. That That's kind of stuff dope. was fun. These are guys I, I grew up watching. Right, you know, we all right. grew up watching, and, yeah. and just to see the amazing stuff that they're doing now, and and to somehow be tied into to that legacy is, is right. a really cool thing. That had to be an incredible experience. Um, what's because you? I mean, you've done a lot of obviously a lot of TV as well. You know, uh, Westworld, Heroes, House, uh, yeah, the Rookie. That's, yeah, that's I mean, where I got Justified. my start. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's where you got Other your start. Other than theater, but yeah, right. Um, what would you say? Like one of one of the, the biggest differences of a uh, film and <clears throat> television for you? I think with, with film, you have more time to tell the story through your behavior, mm-hmm. and in most television, um, unless it's on more of like a premium cable network, like you. Like, uh, like uh, you know, like shows like you see Watchmen, there's a little bit more time to allow the camera to find the thought process right, right. Of, of, the, of the character. Whereas I find in television, um, it's so heavily re- uh, reliant on the writing mm-hmm. and the storytelling. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes the time you're getting out story points in the performance. Right. And um, you can sometimes let the story evolve just visually. But I feel like um, television is uh, is is exciting because it's you have you have also sometimes more um, more cre- you take more creative risks I think mm-hmm, especially definitely. these days yeah, in, yeah. in terms of the characterization and the stories that we're telling For in sure. streaming and on broadcast television. For sure. Whereas um, the studio uh, film film uh, pedagogy is is one that's like pretty well oiled machine like there's a there's a certain uh, formula formula to follow yeah yeah for sure how it works mm-hmm. you know who needs to be the leads what these characters need to need to communicate from the beginning of the film to the end of the film mm-hmm. and in television uh, because we we're think we're talking more serial that you get to evolve that character and, and take it through more of a journey over a longer period of time right you right know? And for so, sure I don't think either one is is better or worse. I think I think they just have different uh, they have different um, approaches and, and different uh, strong points, and and they they reach the audience in a different way. Oh yeah, for and sure. So you just you just you find you find the uh, the win in in each, each right. lane. You know. What's your thoughts about um, <laughs> you know nowadays there's a lot of binge watching, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Television. Yeah. We we can find it everywhere. Hulu, Amazon. I mean, uh, Netflix. Uh, w- do you miss kind of like that? Oh, I wait until next week to see what happens. Or are you? I like. Or do that. you like binging? I do. Yeah. I, I like both. I yeah. like to. I like binging. Um, uh-huh. What was the last thing I binged? I can't even remember the last thing I actually watched. All right, but I kept watching it. I just couldn't stop watching. It was like <laughs> two in the morning. I, like, I gotta get. Off, I gotta get off of this. Gotta television. get it right. <laughs> but. Um, it's exciting though when when something is coming out every week. You yeah, know? yeah. I still kind of like the fireside. Um, they call it the fireside mm. effect. Like mm-hmm. back in the day, people would gather around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's still that has novelty. But I mean, you know, we in a new world. Time change. I mean, time change. You know, you get on your phone and watch and watch. You know, ten, fifteen episodes. Right. You know, you, you <laughs> Literally. It. But it, it is cool. It is cool when stuff comes out. Like I did a show called The Brave, uh-huh. and it was like a thing. I think we aired on Mondays, um, and I just remember the vibe. Like people were waiting for that Monday to drop. Mm-hmm. You know, and so yeah. th- that's just an exciting thing because I, you know, coming from theater, it, that there's a there's a little through line of that energy. Like mm-hmm. you know, when you're about to do a play and like you feel the audience outside and the yeah. curtains are drawn. That energy is like another. Yeah. and so like translating that into. T- you know the television film world that that's kind of the cool thing about broadcast when mm-hmm. it's when it's you know we're gonna have our episode on Tuesday or have it on Thursday you f- you you see people on social media kind of getting excited right, right, um, right. there's a reaction um, 
<laughs> you know, it, it's just it's sort of a a build, a wave that that's fun to ride. But you know, it's yeah. just it's just different. Yeah, it's different. It's yeah. different, bro. Um, I want to take the time to say thank you again for joining me. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure to have you in the studio. And also, thanks to everyone who's watching right now. Uh, and if you enjoy this this interview, go ahead and click thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you would like to uh, watch the full season one of Inside the Black Actor Studio, you can go check us out on www.theonchannel.com. Dot com and you can uh, subscribe there and watch the entire uh, season one up there waiting for you. Um, and a uh, big shout out to Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro for allowing me to come in here every week and bring you these amazing guests and their amazing stories. Uh, so what's one of your favorite, because you do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, military, a lot of uh Cop work and all stuff like that. Like I've done my fair share. You've done your fair share but for you know, sure. Yeah, yeah. What's um sure. what what's like one of your your favorite characters in that realm, um, a profession on on television, military? Wise? Yeah. Hmm. I guess so far, um, I, I I mean, well, I only did one season of the show, but uh, Preach was a fun character mm. on uh. On uh, the Brave, Brave it was yeah. an NBC show. Mm -hmm. I think we premiered 17, 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. We were airing. Um, it, it, you know, I, I like that character because it was like he was a military guy, but he also wasn't, you know, a, a cliche, just like, right. you know, hunt, go get the bad guys, you know, yeah. shoot them up, smoke them out. Type of <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> he somehow had this, like, you know, philosophical, uh, uh, you know, Proletariat, like intellectual approach to everything, uh -huh. um, and that was that was cool to, to see a to, to see a character written like that. Right. And uh, you know the writers also uh, were very um, you know open to to us developing that. And that's that goes back to that thing I like you know doing a television show where you get to see the character develop over mm -hmm. a longer period right. of time, whereas right. in a feature you want to see that beginning, middle, and end exactly. arc mm -hmm. within an hour and a half, right. you know, two hours. So. Um, I, I like that one. I yeah, guess. Um, that was a good one. I mean, it's, and uh, I mean, you know, I realized I haven't played that that many. But I mean, the the rampage one. Right. Yeah. I was. I mean, when I read that, I was like, yo. I mean, which would lead me on to my next. Yeah, rampage. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Th I mean, uh, the Rock is like, if I if I had to fanboy out, and it would be mm. two people, the Rock and. Uh, <laughs> And um, wow, I can't even think of his name. Why can't I think of his name right now? It happens. Uh, yeah, I'm blanking, people. blanking out. Yeah, no. um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Mm. Uh, but uh, how was being on the set um, and on that movie? Yeah, yeah. And, and what did you learn? Um, man, I learned there are levels. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying levels. Yeah, you know, I remember he <laughs> because he he doesn't. Well, in that particular film, maybe because he was also at the time producing Ballers and also right. at the time a lot of stuff uh, in like on. two or three other movies. Like when he wasn't shooting and when we weren't like opposite itself, uh, each other, like he, he was not like just on set, like eating crackers and like, you know, <laughs> drinking espressos. Right, like, right, right. Waiting. No, you know, like he comes in, he shoots. You know, or he comes in, we do a rehearsal, we we shoot, uh -huh. you know, we go over a little bit, we turn around, we shoot something else, and then he's, like, back to the trailer. <sighs> I'm, like, all the rest of us, like, we were, like, waiting, and, you know, because, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, that's the biz, you know, right. you hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait, yeah. <laughs> but, you uh -huh. know, he, he's, uh, he's a busy guy. He, yeah. He's more busy than, than most, so it was just interesting to see the, uh, you know, just the, the levels and how... Um, it's good to be it's good to be busy and like and and doing multiple things it, it was kind of fascinating to see his team and how they move and mm -hmm. all of the things that they have going on seemingly simultaneously and mm -hmm. how they keep all of that in the air yeah. um i thought the director was was really really incredible right um uh i think he's an underrated director I mean, yeah, it was a huge film. I mean, the premiere like yeah. took over all of Hollywood. <laughs> and the audience is as smart as ever before. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, to have a movie about, you know, these animals that, you know, have taken some serum uh -huh. and now they're, you know, humongous and tearing down Chicago is very far-fetched. But 
it's a fun ride yeah. like when you watch it and it was like one of the first movies that I could like watch with my kids you know, <laughs> nice you know, it's, it's, yeah. you know it's a fun ride for what it is it's a, it's a really fun movie it did well it did well yeah, like, it did globally I think it made well. like a half a half a billion dollars it, it worldwide did so well. it did alright um that was, that was a fun, fun. but uh, you know, back to your military thing. Yeah. I, when you asked me that, it's funny, I realized I haven't played that many right. military cats. Uh-huh. You know, I think was, I can probably count them on one hand. But, yeah. But it, I, I, I seem like that people, a you lot of people like ask it cause me. Like yeah. it's, it, I guess it's like that essence and what, what people see you as, mm-hmm. you know. You got you got that very, like, yeah. you know, military essence. Yeah, it might be. Um, and so how, how many children do you have? Um, I have two boys and a two girl. Two boys and a girl. Yeah. You have kids? Hands are full. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do not at the moment. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, though, man. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm it's, like the, most re- it's the hardest but most rewarding, rewarding thing, thing you're ever yeah. doing in your life. Right and when I say hard, it's just because when, you know, our... Our, our crafts, our careers are, are ones where, you know, you have such, you grow into it, having such a singular focus. Right. And, and, and you know, you're, you're, fo- you're like, you are, uh, in a sense, cons- it, it can be consuming. Yes. And then, you know, you, you, a beautiful thing happens to you, like, have children, and you just, you kind of put it in a, in a, in its proper perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and while it's still priority to you creatively and industrially, um, in terms of like life and soul and spirit, yeah. and, you know, legacy, you know, your your kids like really jump for sure naturally and rightfully in that place of priority in your life, and uh, and then the, the choices you make creatively, yeah. like the choice that you know I, I make choices a little different now mm-hmm. in terms of the, the the things that I I do and the projects that I get up I, I I get on board for yeah. because. You know, I know one day that I, I want my kids to be able to see it. it doesn't right. mean I'm like just gonna do like, you know, cookie cutter, you know, blue sky stuff. But mm-hmm. if it's depth, if it has more depth, and if it's grittier, and if it's edgy, and if it's whatever, like I want it to still have, um, you know, artistic integrity. I want it to have um, some kind of message and mean, like, be meaningful. Mm-hmm. You know, characters should have an arc and not just be a, a, a archetype. Right. You know? Right. So it, it it adds in that way. Okay. You know? And um, so, how has your family dynamics changed your 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 acting or your approach to the craft? My family dynamics. It's just uh, more time management. Yeah, more time management. Time, yeah, more, yeah. Energy, I feel it. <laughs> I feel know? it because you know you want you want to. I I like showing up uh-huh. for my family. You know, I, I love it. I, yeah. I coach. I coach. Uh, that's uh, one, baseball, oh, that's one. Uh, you know, I'm I'm there at basketball practice. Uh, nice. I'm there at soccer practice. That's what's up. You know, uh, trying I'm trying to speak French when I can. Hey, they're, <laughs> they're at an immersion school, so I'm, I'm working on you know just speaking it more right. to get them to get them uh, more confident in it. You know, it's it's it just makes it, it makes you be more more uh, intentional about your time management and your inner like how you place your energy. Um, I think before before I was a father, I just didn't have I didn't have the 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 unction or the compulsion to uh, have to be so specific about mm. uh, my time creatively. Mm-hmm. So I might just you know read this and you know watch this. Yeah, and it just kind of now grows. it's like I gotta think about yeah, it. <laughs> About this, right. gotta, like, do, is, is this the best place to, to put my time? Like, right. Is this the is this the best uh, place to to put my focus? Right. You know. Do you ever mix family with work? Like, have you ever brought yeah. them on set Actually, and yeah, do all of that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because like, when I was in, um, I think I did what Banshee. Yeah. And I had I had, I had uh, my son on set. Nice. Um, <laughs> you know, as a baby, I don't know. Retrospectively, I'm like, what was I thinking? Because <laughs> at any moment, he could have just destroyed. It. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, the, boom, the boom, whole show. <laughs> no, just by just by literally just by crying, crying. He could yeah, have just sure. like destroyed the tape, right? But, right. You know, hey. I mean, it was it was good. It, it worked out. But uh, and then this week, this past weekend, we started um, some principal photography on a, a movie I co-wrote and I'm ex- I'm executive producing, mm-hmm. and uh, he's both of them are in it. So I. I oh, kind of okay. doubled them because they they look kind of alike. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert! So, uh, and so we dressed them up in the same wardrobe, you know, <laughs> gave them some of the same actions for the for their takes. Right. And, uh, 
Turn out well. We're just looking at the footage. Uh, nice. We're just starting to kind of come through the footage to get to get to our first edit of that. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I think with within reason. For sure. You know. For sure. Uh, it's 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 good. They have an interest in it. Okay. You All know. Right. I'm also trying to get them to to have an interest in in storytelling and storytelling, writing and their right. reading though. Yeah. You know that that's. The I game. think reading is uh, harder for as the generation now for sure because it's just like. Yeah, so you much know, is right there. So they're on their, they have on their iPads or their little tablets, and yeah, they yeah, can yeah. watch things and still be learning. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a, a certain process that I believe is happening when we're just reading words, yes, and we're having to call upon those images for sure in our own mind or, or from our um, I agree our cipher. Yeah, so we try to encourage that because okay. that just that action um, is a huge part of the. Of being innovative right. in the creative process. Right. Um, so, what are your thoughts on um, uh, where Hollywood's going uh, as far as you know um, inclusion, representation of the black community uh, behind and on the camera? Where is your thoughts? Where going? is it going? Yeah. Uh, up. Yeah. You know, it's going up. Mm-hmm. It's going uh, up. I think it's also uh, it's paradoxical, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. We, we oftentimes are still uh, in the sales portion of the industry. Yeah. So even when sometimes when we are developing, we still have to pitch and sell to, uh, you know, people with more, you know, dominant economics, I'll say. Yeah, so, <laughs> right, right. But then there's a flip side to that coin because – Everything is kind of open source. Like you, you can, you can, you you can control your distribution now. Right. You know. I think um, that was the that was the 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 through line of uh, that was that Magna Carta. Magna Carta. Magna Carta. Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. that whole uh-huh. thing with Jay Z and yeah. Timbaland and all those guys, and they were kind of like saying like the the game has new rules, mm-hmm. and so that that. That is a paradigm that that we find ourselves in in, in film and television mm-hmm. as well. You right. know, what, what the what the musicians found out in music is that they don't have to worry about studios to to distribute their their music. Right, and I think that's what we're finding as filmmakers and as actors and as um, as storytellers is that uh, we can find sophisticated ways to get get it out to people without having to. Uh, wait for someone else to buy into something. Right, and the, me- the mega um, pro- uh, production company yeah, and so studios. It, yeah. yeah, it's exciting for that reason. Right. Um, and of course you have your uh, your vanguards who are doing the, you know, doing the, at the top, you know, right. and are in, in, the, in their zone, you know, yeah, who, sure. who still, you know, 30, 40 years later have that, that white hot space. Um, and then you have you know burgeoning burgeoning artists who have more of an opportunity than ever to mm-hmm. to uh, get their work out there. Yeah, and uh, and have more propriety too. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely the the times have changed for yeah. for better. In a positive <laughs> way. Yeah. Let's, let's get it while it's hot. <laughs> um, so I I I know that you're uh, you're a fan of the Rock, right? You're Peter Maivia, or not not Peter Maivia, <laughs> his dad, but Rocky Maivia. Yeah, you, you grew yeah. Up his, watching his father him. passed away. His, yeah, yeah, and then I, I went on this whole thing like like I just found out that his uh, that his father passed away, mm-hmm. uh, and then there was all of these. Uh, these other wrestlers who yeah. had like passed away in All the last like, mo- months, and I, I learned like Jimmy F- was Jimmy Fly Snooker. Yeah, Jimmy Fly Snooker. Jimmy right Superfly Snooker. Superfly, yeah. Yeah, he um, passed away, and it was like I was like, dang, yo, it's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It was a lot of I mean wrestlers that just passed away. They were really young. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, like it's just crazy. Um, but I have some questions. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna see some little Rocky trivia. See if you uh We doing a rocky <laughs> trip. <laughs> see if you can do good. Yeah. <laughs> see what see see what you do here. All right. I'm gonna ask you five questions. Yo. Okay, we're right. gonna see if you can uh get them right, all right? Talk about on the spot. You didn't even tell me you were gonna do this. <laughs> all right. What role does the rock play in the movie The Mummy Returns? Uh I think he. I'm gonna take a guess. Okay. Right? Uh, Educated guess. Here we go. Yeah, he, he plays like a, like a, a tomb raider of some sort. <laughs> like a, like a, a mummy slayer. Close. The uh, scorpion king. Scorpion king. Hey, yeah. right. 
<laughs> I don't, I don't, actually, yeah, I don't know if I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the, the Scorpion Rocks? King? Yeah, okay, the okay, Scorpion okay, King. Okay, yeah, okay. that was the uh, after the Mummy. Uh, what is the Rock's <laughs> full name? Well, I mean, that's Dwayne Johnson, right? Yeah, but yeah. he's got I'm, a middle name. I don't know his middle name. <laughs> I don't know his middle name. Douglas. My Douglas. Dwayne Douglas. <laughs> okay, I think you got this one. What is The Rock's father's professional name? Rocky, right? Hey, there you go. Yeah, I, just, I, just, I just learned that. I just learned there you that. go. I learned that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I did not know this was going to be. The, this is hilarious. <laughs> what popular show did The Rock host in 2000? Okay. Was it A? Yes, multiple choice. Yeah. Yes, multiple <laughs> choice. A chance. Was it A, All That, B, Jimmy Fallon, or C, Saturday Night Live? Saturday Night Live. There you Yay. go. Hey. <laughs> Educated guess. Educated guess. All right, and last but not least. Shout out to Eddie Murphy, though, for just, like, right, that you know, part. putting on his he 45 yeah. and coming out he like, yo, I'm it. still that dude. <laughs> Crush Saturday Night Live. That was awesome. All right, I'll give you, uh, this one's also multiple choice, okay? I bet. Where did The Rock meet his wife? Was it A? <laughs> a? Yo, like, how, like, come on. Hold on, A? I'm a fan. I didn't say I'm a maniac. I'm like, <laughs> creepy. I don't know. I mean, a, but at, go ahead. at a club. Let's go. Let's, let's, Guess okay at a club. Go ahead. B at a wrestling event or C at the store. Club, wrestling event, or store. I'm gonna say the store. It was a club. It was a club. Yeah. I was gonna say that, but I was like, yeah. ah, this sounds like yeah. yeah. He actually bought her a drink. I, I, I know this because I. No. Because <laughs> you're the guy. You've been, you've been scrolling and finding out all Let the weird Let me just say, I've been a fan for a long time. I've been a fan, too. But these, these questions are, these are interesting questions. I would, I would be you got concerned two. if I got th these questions right. Like, that would be weird. You got two out of five. That's pretty good, you know? There's a lot of people I don't know these, these answers to these kind of questions, too. Could you imagine if right. I knew all of those questions? I would be like, wow. Yeah, that would be kind of strange. That would be kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know all the questions. I feel glad I didn't get them. I right. knew like you know, three out of the weird. five. That was pretty much it. <laughs> I do. I got one. Right. No, you got two. I got two. You got two. Saturday right. Night Live and then uh, yeah, Rock. Okay. There you go. Uh, but I'd like to thank you so much Man, for for fun. joining me into studio. And uh, I just want one last question that I like to ask all of my guests here. Um, heaven's real. You get up to God. What would you like Him to say to you? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hey, that's that it. part, you know, and let's end it on that. Thank you so much oh, for joining me, man. You, it's been a pleasure having you. Right. Uh, folks, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Demetrius, go ahead and tell them where to find you. And yeah. uh, if you have anything coming up, share it. Hey, you can catch me at Demetrius Grows Across All Social Platforms. Uh, we're kicking off season six of Fear of the Walking Dead. Hey. Uh, this summer, uh, also check out Body Cam. I was at Mary J. Blige. It'll be in theaters this year uh, from Paramount Players. And uh, a film on the way called God Free. God Free. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Keep keep your eye out for this one. And thank you so much. You can find me everywhere at I am Danny Royce. We'll see you next week. Same place, same time here inside the Black Actor Studio. God bless. God bless. Digital Broadcast Network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. <laughs>